The five fastest ways to lose chest fat. Monk mode. The time I told the truth to make these transformations happen over and over again was one giant and drastic leap. It was really the hardest decision to make and the exact reason why most people are stuck at 35% body fat with their chest fat and even love handles. I'm a big believer that your life today is an accumulation of the decisions you made yesterday, one month ago, three months ago, one year ago, and even a decade ago. Sometimes one wrong and bad decision can change your trajectory and even that with your health and fitness. You're stuck having chest fat or being at 30% body fat for a reason and in this video I'll give you the keys to finally move over from being at the 93% into the 7% that are at a healthy body fat percentage and I'll go into more detail what you need to do to lose your chest fat. A paper by Harvard was released showing that one in two people will be obese by 2030 and one in four people will be severely obese. One study by the New England Journal of Medicine found that if your friend becomes obese then you have a 57% chance of increasing obesity yourself. Even if your friend lives hundreds of miles away, it sounds simple, but if you have a close connection with unhealthy people, then it's more than likely that you'll be unhealthy yourself. My life mission is to build this channel as a resource to be that one decision that will change the trajectory of your life, not only yours, but the people around you. Look at my client David. We built muscle and lost chest fat using the exact same tips I'm about to share in this video, and he runs his own company, so time is no excuse. Look at Edgar, dropping close to 40 pounds in 16 weeks, Tori, and the list goes on and on. In this video, I'll share the five fastest ways to lose chest fat. Four months ago, I made the drastic decision to follow my protocol called the Extreme Reset, very similar to what some of you guys may know as the monk mode protocol. Let me explain. You're fat or you're out of shape because you're making bad decisions, and that's the honest truth. Now, this isn't a blanket statement. I know I've gotten out of shape myself because of life circumstances like my surgery last year or growing through a bumpy period in your life, but with the Extreme Reset, it will free you from the hamster wheel with your health and fitness. Now, to answer the question, can you target where you lose body fat from? The video is designed to help you lose your chest fat. So does that mean you can specifically target those areas? The answer is no. You cannot pinpoint a part of your body and tell it to lose fat. You may think that this is a bad thing, but in all honesty, it doesn't make any difference in the long term. Your body drops fat from areas of your body that has the most stored fat. For example, if you have a lot of stored fat around your waist or around your chest, around your legs, then that's where it's likely to start to lose fat. It will come from your waist long before it comes from your legs. If you're worried about the fat that surrounds your chest, then the chances are this is an area where your body is storing a lot of body fat. So following a nutrition and training routine will eventually lead to your body dropping body fat from those areas of concern. The trick with any new diet or training program is to avoid worrying about the initial progress and focus in on the long-term goal. The Ziploc bags are a representation of your chest. However, as we like to describe in man boobs, your pectoralis is in there, but it's surrounded by fat tissue, which we describe as man boobs or pseudogynecomastia, which is fake female breast growth. Now, you have the right size and the normal shape of a chest. However, it's being distorted by the fat tissue around it. And in some cases, you may be suffering with gynecomastia. In this case, I highly recommend to see your doctor if you have inflammation around your areola. However, watching this video, I'm going to show you exactly what you need to do to be able to reduce the fat tissue on your chest. What you're going to do is follow step one. And step one is going to allow you to take the first step to being able to decrease the fat tissue around your chest. And then going through step two, we'll be able to accelerate that process and step three, step four, and step five, and it's gonna take time. However, as you're seeing, you're going to have this fat tissue leave your chest over time, following the steps that I'm gonna mention in this video. And over time, you're gonna see that correct chest shape that you want, utilizing the exercises, but, but I'll leave it here, and we'll move over into tip number one. But before we dive in, a lot of research and editing goes into making a video like this. Just do me one favor, if you wouldn't mind, gently hit the like button, It'd be greatly appreciated. And if you enjoy this kind of content, subscribe and hit the notification bell if you're new. Let's kick it off. So step one is analyzing your current physique. 
Most people who want to lose their chest fat have no idea how much they want to lose and when they want to lose it and what their ideal physique actually is. To go back to the saving up for a house analogy from earlier, it's like saving up for a house without bothering to decide what your eventual budget is going to be on when you're going to buy it and whether the amount you're saving up for is even realistic. The first thing you want to do is weigh yourself. Do it with as few clothes as possible and try to do it the first thing in the morning after using the toilet. Write down the results. Next, you want to do a waist circumference. You want to do a chest circumference, hips, glutes, and your arms and legs, and your neck if you want to be thorough. Order yourself a Renfo tape. This is incredibly cheap and makes measuring your body simple. Take three measurements for each body section and write down your results. Finally, you also want to take progress photos. You want to find an air with a good lighting and ideally you want to get some good photos that someone else can take and grab a photo of yourself facing forwards and one facing sideways and I highly recommend for doing this at least every two weeks. Not only will these forms of measurement help you get into a good idea of your current physique but it will also be incredibly incredibly useful for progress over time. Humans are terrible at objectively measuring their progress and we rarely notice how well we're really doing. Using measurements like these can help you and gain some perspective. The only thing I ask is just don't expect anything within the first few weeks. Women should also keep in mind that you'll have your menstrual cycle and that could lead to huge fluctuations in your body weight and also give you issues with bloating and so on. So don't let the increase in your scale weight over the course of a week or two get to you. For men and women, little things like bowel irregularity, water intake, sleep duration, and sodium intake can easily affect your morning weigh-in. I say this to my clients all the time. Weighing in is just one data point among many others, and that's it. Take your measurements on the same day each week at the same time. For example, taking your measurements at 7 a.m. on Mondays before you have your breakfast or go for your workout. This can minimize the risk of weight fluctuations affecting your results. Step number two, analyze your diet and activity levels. Losing weight is about increasing your activity levels and or decreasing your caloric intake. We will shortly be talking about creating a caloric deficit for fat loss, but first, it's a good idea to analyze your current situation. How many calories are you consuming each day? How many calories are you burning? This information is vital if you want to make the smart changes to your lifestyle. For instance, many people who want to lose their chest fat are probably gaining weight before they start. This means that in the first few weeks of their new diet and training, they may not lose weight and instead their weight may be static. This can be frustrating. But if you are gaining weight before you started and your new program has stopped this, then you're actually achieving something really good. So when someone wants to work with me, I ask everything to do with their day. I diagnose them and I take them through what I call my DNA sequence. So we jump on a call and I figure out what their day is like, what time they wake up, what time they go to bed, what they're doing at work, everything. And once I diagnose their situation, I tell them what is the best form of cardio they need to do, the best form of training, and I design their entire program. I'm a wealth advisor. I'm the senior managing partner of my team. Um, I manage a lot of money. I have two teenage girls. I have a very robust um, friend group and I have a 32 year marriage that I really like and want to keep intact. So I'm a busy person. Last week I was at 13,000. The week before I was at 14,000 steps. Um, as you can see, I'm in my office. I actually even have a treadmill at my desk. A lot of the people that I work are busy professionals. They're highly motivated. They've crushed it in their career and it shows that they have hard work ethic. They just need the science. And if you're that person, you're a busy professional and you finally want to get into control of your health. It's going to help you in your business. It's going to help you in your life in general. You're going to have more energy and you're going to have this butterfly effect from having 20, 30 pounds off of your body. If that's you and you want my help, go into the description of this video. You'll see a one-on-one -on -one coaching link there. Fill out the application. I'll get in touch with you or someone from my team and we will help you get into the best shape of your life and that result will be guaranteed. But let's move on. So step number three is creating specific goals. So you want to lose the weight and you want to lose the chest fat, but exactly how much weight do you want to lose and by what date and how realistic is your time frame? See, if you don't create specific goals, it can be impossible to gauge your progress. A normal timeline to see results is around 12 weeks and a healthy target for weight loss per week is about half a kilo or one pound per week. So a good target would be to lose six kilos or 12 pounds within 12 weeks. Provided your diet is high in protein, the weight loss will be from your body's fat reserves and not from your muscle. If you're trying to lose weight from your belly, love handles, and your chest, then it's likely that the majority of the body fat is stored in these areas. So within 12 weeks and you have dropped six kilos of body fat or 12 pounds, most of it will be from the problem areas, but also from areas such as your legs, neck, face, and arms. So step number four is to create a caloric deficit. 
deficit. If you're aiming to drop 12 pounds in 12 weeks, you need to create a caloric deficit to lose chest fat. It's simple as that and it's going to take time. This is where the number of calories you consume is fewer than the number of calories you actually burn. To lose one pound per week, you need to create a 500 caloric deficit day. This can either be done by number one, burning 500 calories extra from exercise or even walking, reducing your caloric intake from food by 500 calories, or you can burn 250 calories from exercise and reduce your caloric intake by 250. The third option is by far the best as it doesn't require a massive drop in calories consumed or a ridiculously intense workout. Of course, if a 500 caloric deficit is a bit too much, you can increase your program length to 24 weeks. That way, you can aim for 2 pounds every 4 weeks and you can be at a 250 caloric deficit. This is how your body burns and stores fat. It's happening to you right now. The green area represents your body storing fat occurring in response to a meal. The blue area represents your body breaking down fat occurring in response to fasting between meals and during sleep. Over a 24 hour period, these will be balanced assuming you're not consuming more calories than you expend or the blue portions will be large larger, burning fat if you're in a caloric deficit. To lose chest fat, you need to be in a caloric deficit consistently over time. As you can see, your body's always either storing or burning fat, and it flips between these states several times every day, depending on your eating schedule. Now in the past, you would need to fill out a long formula, and I know it's a pain. And before AI, you would need to download an app and fill out your email, and it's just tremendously tedious process before figuring out what your magic number is. So what is your caloric deficit? This all changed on November 22nd, 2020, and the world changed forever. AI became accessible to the public for free through a tool called ChatGPT. This is the most powerful tool in the world. For context, you may know a little search engine called Google. It took the search engine almost a year to reach 100 million users. It took ChatGPT the same milestone of 100 million users, and they did that in two months. You can now use AI to figure out how to lose chest fat. So this is what I want you to do. Go to chat openai.com it's totally free and type in this exactly you're a professional health and fitness expert i want you to lose one pound of fat per week here's my data age weight height gender and tell it i want to train five times per week how many calories should i be eating if you're stuck with me this far it means that you're pretty serious about getting results for the next 24 hours i'll be helping everyone figure out their macros in the comments i want you to give me all that data your age weight height gender your body fat percentage and how many times you want to be training and i'll recommend the best macros for you so this is where we move over to step number five resistance training the driving force to body recomposition to be able to grow that chest with not just reducing the fat tissue is through resistance training meaning it's easy to lose fat by using the data alone but it's impossible to build your chest tissue without weight training weight training is paramount to building muscle and improving your overall body composition and with the anatomy of the chest the pecs are divided into three parts according to its origin number one is pars clavicularis which contains the descending fibers pars sternocostalis which is the lateral fibers and pars abdominalis the ascending fibers the lower part while there's no upper and lower chest muscles it's more so of a physiomechanical matter of course that different exercise and working angles will stress ascending, descending, and lateral fibers to a different degree. So while it may be impossible to isolate a certain fiber strand, it is well possible to shift the main workload from one strand to the other by selecting the appropriate exercises. Having an outstanding chest requires four simple workouts. Exercise number one, a total of eight studies were utilized for referencing this video and one consistency was the barbell bench press is by far the best exercise for chest development and therefore it deserves to be the first exercise in any training program targeting the chest. Akagi and colleagues found that there was a direct correlation between your pectoralis size and your bench press performance. The EMG data from Boak, Burns and Busky showed that the barbell bench press being the most superior chest exercise. Number two is the incline press targeting the upper chest pars clavicularis. Chibs and colleagues found that a bench angle of 44 degrees to 56 degrees resulted in greater activation of the upper pectoralis compared to a horizontal bench. The EMG data from Borg, Burns and Buskies shows that the incline bench press with an angle of 45 degrees provides a 69% more intense stimulation to the upper chest. In other words, the sending fibers from pars clavicularis are optimally stimulated and will thus, as bro science tell you, bring up your upper pecs. 
What makes incline dumbbell alpha is that it's supposed to be harder than flat dumbbell. Why I've picked the incline dumbbell bench press over barbell is number one, is to provide a greater range of motion at the bottom of the movement and at the top of the movement, providing more bang for your buck in this exercise. So how do you perform this exercise? Again, to preserve your shoulders and avoid injury, tuck your elbows slightly and make sure that at the peak of the press, the dumbbell is over your upper chest and not over your face. Exercise number three is the cable crossover or the pec deck. A study from the American Council of Exercise analyzing the top three most effective chest exercises utilizing the average EMG data and RPE, the ratings of perceived exertion, which is on a scale used to measure the intensity of your exercise between 0 and 10, 0 being nothing at all, 4 being somewhat heavy, 7 being very heavy, and 10 being very, very heavy. Both the pec deck at 98% of muscle activation compared to the ball of bench press and the bent forward cable crossover at 93% of muscle activation elicited nearly equivalent muscle activation as as the barbell bench press. Likewise, ratings of the perceived exertion of each of the three exercises were comparable as well. The EMG data from Bork, Burns, and Buskies also goes to show that the cable crossover being the most effective exercise. Further supporting this claim for the third most important exercise in your chest arsenal, exercise number four, dips or a cable chest raise. A comparison of weight and body weight movements using EMG measurements would not be fair because muscle activation increases with load and the load will be constant and for advanced trainees, load relative to their strength in bodyweight only exercise. Why dips would be a greater finisher is due to the ability to properly stimulate the lower pec, the pars abdominalis, and their ascending fibers. I would also try this variation of cable raises, one of my favorite chest finishers. The next thing I want you to do is to reduce stress. Did you know that stress can cause you to gain body fat and overall chest fat? Yes, this is sadly true, and it does so through several mechanisms. Stress can increase your cortisol production, which can increase your appetite. Stress can also cause insomnia, which also affects the appetite regulation and food choice. Stress can lead to a reduce in physical activity activity which can cause weight gain. The effect of stress on your appetite is the biggest issue if you're looking to reduce your body fat levels. A study in 2001 found that women who had high levels of cortisol were more likely to eat high sugar foods and to overeat in general. So it's not always possible to reduce stress if, for example, your work as a nurse or you're a firefighter, your life is going to be stressed. However, you can find ways to better manage stress, therapy, supplementation, meditation, which I personally do, and you can try to reduce your exposure to it where possible. This can help you sleep better, which brings us to step number seven, sleep more. The general consensus is that you burn fat, you need to spend more time moving and less time being sedentary. So the advice to go lay down in bed for a few hours may seem a bit strange, but there's a lot of of evidence that sleeping longer can help you burn fat. The reason for this is that bad sleep, which I consider is less than seven hours each night, has a number of downsides. It can cause fatigue, which will reduce your daily activity levels. A 2009 meta-analysis theorized that poor sleep could actually lead to a reduction in your non exercise activity thermogenesis, your need. It's a measure of all the calories you burn through non-exercise. A lot of these things are subconscious. So running up the stairs instead of walking, fidgeting while you're on the desk, chasing after kids. Remember the last time you were tired when small tasks like tying your shoelaces felt like an effort? Compare that to when you're fully rested self. You will find yourself speeding around the kitchen, cleaning up or pacing up and down at a fast rate while on the phone. These small movements don't burn many calories on their own. But when combined throughout the day, week, and month can contribute to a lot of your metabolism. Poor sleep can make a huge difference to your body weight by affecting your energy expenditure. But this is not the only way which poor sleep can lead to weight gain. There is evidence that bad sleep can affect your appetite, and here are three ways it does. Bad sleep can lead to reduced leptin levels, a hormone that helps you feel full after food. Bad sleep can lead to increased ghrelin, a hormone that makes you feel hungry. Sleeping badly can lead to brain seeking out higher calorie foods by activating the same receptors is marijuana. An increased appetite for high calorie foods and a reduced number of calories burned through activities can make losing your chest fat much harder. Improving your sleep quality and duration can also help with your mood. It can lower your cortisol levels. It can speed up your recovery for intense workout. I highly recommend aiming for seven to eight hours of good quality sleep each night and you can see some of the serious changes on the scale. Step number eight, supplementation to improve your health. Supplement plays a small yet an effective role in fat loss. If you have 
have a small budget, then rest assured, it is possible to lose your chest fat without supplements or some rubbing cream that I've been advertised on that I have no affiliation to. But using supplements can improve your results and make certain aspects of fat loss easier. Whey protein shakes can help it make easier to follow a high protein diet. Herbal supplements can improve your sleep and mood. Caffeine can help increase your metabolic rate and burn a few more calories. You don't have to over rely on supplementation to do the hard work for you. With that being said, you don't want to over rely on supplementation to do the hard work for you. Instead, think of supplementation as a way for you to work harder. Supplements can help you train harder. They may help you create a larger caloric deficit and maintain it for longer. Step nine, I want you to up your workout intensity. Increase the intensity of your workouts is something that everyone should try to do, but you want to ensure that the other aspects of your fat loss journey is in a good place beforehand. A good diet, good sleep, good stress management. There are many ways to increase the intensity of a workout. Shortening your rest times, lifting heavier weights, changing the number of reps, changing the type of exercises you perform, swapping a jog for a hill sprint. Make sure that you're fit and strong enough to safely increase your workout intensity and also need to ensure that your recovery process is also optimal. Otherwise, you may injure yourself or succumb to overtraining. Step 10. Evaluate your performance. Before you start your fat loss journey, you need to take measurements as we discussed earlier in the video. But you also want to continue taking measurements as you go along. Evaluating your performance in the gym and in the kitchen is crucial. Are you training hard enough? Are you creating a big enough caloric deficit? Or are you perhaps training too hard? Has your sleep been affected? Are you consistently aching? These are the symptoms symptoms of overtraining. Properly evaluating your performance can help you improve your training and diet and also allow you to lose that chest fat and your love handles overall. So those are my tips to lose chest fat. I also want to share with you in my personal experience, I will hold fat tissue on my chest and it will just require more time to be able to get rid of that fat tissue. And the two things that have helped me is number one, staying in a caloric deficit consistently. And for me personally, and I've been doing this for 10 years, it'll take me about four to five months before I really see all of it gone it might take longer for you so be patient with the process and the second thing I love doing is actually training my chest not only do you want to reduce the fat tissue but you want to increase the surface area of how the fat tissue is spread over your chest but I'll leave the video here these are two amazing videos you can watch about dieting and I'll see you guys in the next one cheers